Hi, this is Steve from Pixelbump.com. Welcome to our exciting new tutorial on X-Particle Setup. So I just got back from a few weeks off. I thought what might be fun for this summer is instead of sharing a technique I've recently been working with or something I've been developing, I'd go to the movies every week, watch a summer blockbuster, and then we'd dissect an effect from the film. And I think that'd be fun for you and it'd be a lot of fun for me because I'd get to go to more movies. So this week, I'm going to do an effect from the Avengers movie, which opened about a week, a week ago. And it's a fun one because it allows me to delve into a request I got. A lot of you wanted to know how I set up the X particle setup for the Doctor Who regeneration. This is a really fun way to go over that setup because it's a very similar setup and when I show you how to do this, you can do it for anything else that is similar. Any place where you want to have geometry substitute as an emitter for something in your scene. The funny part is I've already shown you how to do all the rendering for this because that was all shown last time in the Doctor Who Regeneration. So I guess in the last tutorial, I kind of put the cart before the horse. But I'm happy to go back in here and show you how this one's done and show you a really fun way to simulate the effect from the Avengers film. I've got a piece of footage loaded in here to my scene, and it's just a close-up of a hand from shot from behind. And I've got this very simple piece of geometry here. And if you don't want to model something, you know, if you don't even feel comfortable making something this crude and bad looking, you know, you can always come here into the content browser, grab a hand off of one of your two people here and use that as a generator or for any other part of the human body you wanted to use. I went ahead and made this really crude looking thing uh, because her hand was in a very specific position and I wanted to match that a little closer. And the nice thing is that much like with Doctor Who, I didn't have to object track this exactly. I could do this kind of loosely and it was gonna work just fine. So you'll see that it matches overall. It, it follows close enough. I threw the whole hand into a subdivided object just to get a little smoother, make it a little less thick. And that brings us to our starting point. Now we're ready to start generating particles from that geometry. And so I'm going to come over here to my X particle setup and I'm going to set up a system. You don't necessarily have to set up a system when using X particles. I just really like it because it keeps everything nice and cleanly organized. And if you've watched any of my other tutorials, you know I'm kind of a stickler for organization. So I'm gonna go ahead, create a system, and it's gonna give me a bunch of options here. And what I need to do is choose a generator. And for that, I'm gonna go ahead and just choose an emitter. And it's gonna fill in the system for me with all the different types of folders that I could use. And right now, if I just start rolling through, you'll see we've got our emitter, but it's just a regular square emitter sitting here pushing particles out into space. And if I go ahead and click on my emitter here, I can go ahead and change the type of emitter. If I want just a simple source, these are gonna work just great. But I'm gonna come down here and select object. And then I'm gonna go ahead and drag in my subdivided hand. So now if I rewind and hit play, you'll see that the geometry is starting to generate a bunch of particles. Now, right now, this is almost worthless for what we want, but that's okay. We're gonna get this looking really cool in a relatively short amount of time. There are different ways we can control where the particle emission is gonna come from on the geometry. The first place here is with the selection tag. I could come in, make a selection on the geometry, fill in the selection tag here, and I could limit it that way. And for Doctor Who, that's exactly how I did it. I just selected certain polygons on the face and said only emit particles from that selection. Here I want to do something a little different, but I'm going to want to use a texture. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new material. And if I come in and let's just grab for an example really quickly here, a checkerboard. And I'm going to close this out, drop it onto my hand, and I'm gonna come over to my emitter and I'm going to want to drop this texture into here, but what I'm gonna to need to do is change emit from to polygon area. And then I can go ahead 
grab my texture tag and drop it right here into the texture tag for X particles. Now I can choose to have different things emit. I can use many of the different channels in the shader are available here for emission. I'm going to stick with color and I can also choose to have the color of the image dictate the color of the particles. So if I come in here and I change the black to red and the red to green, and I go ahead and hit play, we're going to see nothing coming out here. And that means that I need to change the threshold. And the threshold basically says if the color isn't in this value, don't emit. So right now it's saying only things that are in white emit. And that's not what we want. Let's go ahead and bring it all the way down to black so we can get everything emitting. And you can see now I've got red and green particles coming out. And if I go ahead, come over, drop down the speed, you should see a little clearer that the green particles are coming from the green part of the image and the red particles are coming from the red part of the image. Now, I don't want it to be coming off of a checkerboard, so I'm going to go ahead, come back into my material and change it. And I'm going to go ahead and do a noise and I'm going to use electric for this one. And I'll go ahead and start shaping this. I want to have some really bright areas and some really black areas. And I'm going to want to kind of throttle it really hard. There we go. So right about there is where it completely cuts off. And then I'm going to change my scale, drop that down a bit more. And let's go ahead and see how that's looking. And let's go ahead and change it to cubic mapping. There we go. So now we've just got these dots all over the hand that are going to emit. And we're only going to emit from these white areas. So most of the hand actually will not be emitting particles. So I'll come over here, come back to my emitter. And let's turn our threshold back up. And I'm going to go ahead and change the color channel to none. I don't want it to actually emit my color. I'm going to set that here and just make some nice red particles. That's what I want. So now we should be able to... I think I'm having a weird redraw issue here. Let's go ahead and turn off the preview anyway, because we just really want to focus on the particles. Now I've just got particles coming off of those areas of the hand. And if I drop my emission speed down, just coming off from that area of the hand. So that's going to give us our start. Let's go ahead and jump up the number of particles. And let's go ahead and make a couple more changes here. Bring the radius down. There we go. Okay, so now we've got some particles coming off the hand, but they're not really doing anything. So I'm going to go ahead and start adding some modifiers. And first one I want to add is some gravity. And I'll just put that down here in my modifiers, keep it nicely organized. And if I go ahead and hit play, you'll see the particles are falling off, but they're falling off way, way, way too fast. So I'm going to drop that down to maybe two. That's better. That's got a nice slow falling. And let's give it a little bit of variation. So not everything's doing exactly what its brother was. There we go. Just randomize things a little bit. All right, so the next thing we need to do is add in some turbulence. So I'm going to come back to my modifiers, grab some turbulence, put that in here, keep everything nicely organized. And let's go ahead and see what we got. So it's really big turbulence right now, which is really good because I really like to add multiple instances of turbulence when I do this. And so for this first one, I'm going to go ahead, just drop the scale a little bit, and I'm going to go ahead and push the strength 
a little bit higher. There we go. So that's given us something a little more interesting. But now we can see our particles are living just way too long. So I'm going to come over here to my emitter, click on emission, and I'm going to go ahead, turn off emit all frames. I don't want it to emit forever. And matter of fact, let's see, I want it to start about right there, maybe about frame 40. So I'll go ahead, back it up, frame 40. There we go. Nice. And I don't want it to be the full lifespan. I'm going to go ahead and put that down to maybe 24. There we go. That's much better. But I think our area emitting particles is probably just a little too big. So I'm going to come back to my texture and I'm going to see if I can work it a little more. There we go. Get those dots even smaller. Just want a few strings. There we go. That's more like it. We can start to see the definition of the individual areas, the individual strands, which is what I really would like to see. So maybe I'll even go just a tiny bit smaller with that. There we go, that's more like it. That's exactly what I wanted to see. But now we don't have very many particles, so let's go ahead and let's try tripling our birth rate. Go really high on it. There we go. Now we've got more particles happening. And maybe we wanna actually increase our gravity a little bit now that it's swept up with the turbulence. Wanna feel it pulling down just a little more. There we go. That's looking pretty good. So like I said, I usually like to do two turbulences. So this one is the large one. And I'm going to go ahead, come back to my modifiers, go to turbulence. And this one I'm going to call the small turbulence. And this is just a nice way to add more variation. And I'll go ahead and change the turbulence type. I'm going to drop the scale down, bring down the number of octaves, and I'm going to bring up the strength. And let's see what we get out of that. There we go. That's looking more interesting. Maybe I'll even pull it up higher. There we go. Now I'm starting to see the kind of random movement that I was looking for. So I'm going to bring my birth rate up even higher now. There we go. And I've now got particles emitting seemingly from a hand tracked in 3D space. And that more or less is a very simple setup for X particles that you can use. Now that you've kind of seen how the hand was set up, let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of the other modifiers that we can possibly use. So we've got things in here like attractors, which we can use to gather the particles to a certain area. So you can see here they want to go to that attractor. And this can be really useful if you want to have particles shooting into a direction. There they go. They want to go over to it. But let's go ahead, bump up everything here. Now that's a little further away and they're not going in the same direction. They didn't want to go as bad, but there we go. Now they're going right back to that center. We've got deflectors, which is basically a, a plane in space that you can use to bounce your particles around. So I'm going to go ahead, make this a little bigger. I'm going to rotate it. and I'm gonna let the particles bounce off it. You can see them starting to interact with this surface. So this is great if you have a wall or a floor that you want to, use to have your particles interact with. The deflector is a wonderful way to do that. And then we've got something like the trail. 
And the trail is something that's really fun. You can't get it in thinking particles or the regular Cinema 4D particles. And what it's gonna allow me to do is I'm gonna drop my emitter into the emitter for the trail. And if I go ahead and hit play now, we're gonna see that the particles are now having a lifespan that's visible. So if I wanted to do something to simulate long exposure or motion blur and I don't have Krakatoa to work with, this is a great way to get that simulated look. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that guy back out and go ahead and hit play one more time. And I think that's about where we're gonna leave off today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you've learned something that you can use in your work. If you have any questions, you can always hit me up on Twitter or Facebook in Google Plus or down in the comments, or you can throw popcorn at me at the movies. That usually works too. And if you wanna keep learning, there are more great tutorials and assets for you to use in your work at pixelbump.com. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy this new series for summer blockbusters, and I will see you next week when we're gonna look at some effects from Mad Max Fury Road.